Alright, Buenos Dias, mis amigos. Roderick 1983 says, The beast from the sea was Rome overtaking Jerusalem near 70 AD. The beast did overcome the saints, overtook the city only for a season. Verse 4, And they worshipped the dragon. Is similar to when they said, No king except Caesar. Caesar, Kaiser. Remember, Jimmy, the Bible is written for you, but not to you, in most all cases. I believe, yes, a rapture already happened about 70 AD, when those elect were marked by the Spirit and spared. Yes, you're going to use what Paul mentioned about it already happened, not to believe it, but he was telling those at that time that it was happening shortly. And it did for that generation. 9. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city, and fire come down from God out of heaven and devoured them. That clearly tells us, or I'm sorry, that clearly tells you it's on earth. It was Jerusalem 70 AD. Okay. So I appreciate this. And I, look, Roderick, uh, you know, I appreciate his his comments Roderick I appreciate your comments I really do but you're 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 stubborn as a mule so I don't expect you to learn anything today but maybe somebody does or maybe in time you'll figure it out I want to try to make this real real simple with the hope that you do understand with the hope that you do gain something from this all right, so the first thing I'm going to start is the the one passage I believe that you're guessing I'm going to point to. I'm not sure. No. Yes, you're going to use what Paul mentioned about it already happened, not to believe it. I'm not sure if this is it, if this is what you're referring to or not. But uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 18, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. This clearly has not happened. All right, I mean, but there's so many places we can go to, and I do this every day. And, uh, you know, I can't assume that you're paying attention every day, but let's assume that you've never listened to my video. Or any, you'll never listen to me talk about it. And, of course, I have to assume that you've never read the Bible. So i got to show you what the Bible says. All right. Now, let's see here. And... 1 Corinthians 15 talks a little bit about the resurrection. All right. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then comes in. So, in order to uh, teach this idea that the resurrection already happened in 70 AD, you have to say that the Bible is a lie. And you obviously got a problem. I mean, you either believe this or you don't. There's no wiggle room here. You have to ignore it. 
you have to dismiss it. That's the only way to get around it. When Jesus returns, it is the end of the world. You think about Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. Jesus is asked specifically, what is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus plainly tells us that when he comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world. Let's read here in John chapter 6. Jesus says, And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that all of which he has given me I should lose nothing but raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which sees the Son and believes on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Whoso eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. At the last day. The last day has not happened. The last day is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. All right, Second Peter chapter 3, but this... But the Lord, the day of the Lord, will come as a thief in the night, in which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. All right. Look, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, that's the last day. And what happens at the last day? We are lifted up into the air. First the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord this happens at the last day it didn't happen at 70 80 okay there's no way around it you have to be willfully ignorant to believe this stuff to believe that the resurrection has passed already all right you have to be willingly ignorant and look, I get it. Not everybody's read the Bible. I mean, look, you got TikTok, and you got, you know, Twitter, and I, you know, uh, Instagram. I, you know, I don't even know all of them. It, you got so much going on on the internet. You just, and you got Netflix, right? I mean, you just people just don't got time to read the Bible. There's too many 10 second videos to watch. People just ain't got time. All right, so I get it. But if you were to take the time, you would, it's, it's, it's right there, right? It's right there. And of course, uh, uh, reading is just, it's not enough, right? The key to understanding is faith. Now, this thing, this that whole thing with 70 AD is predicated on Daniel chapter 9. And the idea that the Antichrist will make an end of sins. That he will, here, let me read it for you. I mean, this is, it's the whole idea. This is the whole basis of 70 AD right here. Daniel chapter 9. And the idea is that the Antichrist will confirm a covenant with many for one week, and that the Antichrist will cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. That's and of course they'll you know they'll try to use uh, verse 26, the people of the prince shall come destroy the city. There, 70 AD. I mean, to me, it reminds me a little bit of those ancient alien guys, where they would, they would find in, a, um, you know, some ancient uh, ruins, or they would find, you know, the pyramids. Oh, and whatever it is that they would find. Oh, aliens. That must be aliens. I don't know what that. It must be aliens. Anything that's unknown to them is their go-to is. Aliens. Same thing with the 70 AD people. Oh, 70 AD. Oh, 70 AD, 70 AD, 70 AD, 70 AD, 70 AD. Well, that's a willing ignorance right there, okay? This here, the Messiah, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is the one that confirmed the covenant with many for one week. 
and in the midst of the week is when he laid down his life and when he laid down his life he presented himself as the perfect sacrifice for our sins to God. He that's why he died. And not only did he die to take away sins, he brought it back up and so that we might have life through him. He has led the way. He's our leader. He's the our role model. He's the one who has done it all for us. And those of us that believe in him, we follow him. He's went down to the grave and is appointed unto man once dying after this the judgment so he's went down into the grave and he has ascended up to heaven with the promise that he will return for us at the end of the world on judgment day okay so Jesus is the one that caused the sacrifice and oblation to cease until the consummation that's his return that's when we're joined together with the Lord. And then that determined shall be poured upon the desolate, the unbelievers, the unsaved. All evil will be done away with. This is prophesied from Genesis to Revelation over and over and over and over again. It has nothing to do with 70 AD at all. I mean, I, I just wonder, you know, do people even consider the vision? Have they ever read the Bible? Can, it's it's crazy to me that people could read this and not see it. I mean, it's a phenomenon, really, and it all stems from a lack of faith. If you have faith, there's really no reason at all to not see it. So, know, therefore, and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem under the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks, three score, two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall, even in troublous times. So this here is paralleled in John chapter 2. The building back or the building of the temple. Alright. So Roderick's claim, belief, that he didn't get it from the Bible. He got it from other men. Right? Uh, you, you, don't, you don't get 70 AD from reading the Bible. Period. But this um, tearing down of the city, tearing down of the temple, this didn't happen in 70 AD. See, Jesus tore down the temple in 33 AD, but then he, three days later he built it back up, a new temple. Right, and that's the temple that we put our hope into is this everlasting temple this temple of everlasting life Jesus said destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up and the, the Jews they didn't get it and they still don't get it today then said the Jews 40 and 6 years was this temple I'm building well thou rear it up in three days are you out of your cotton picking mine see they didn't understand he spake the, bod the temple of his body so also in Daniel, it talks about tearing down the temple or tearing down Jerusalem, the city of God, or the tearing down to restore and to build, to tear it down and to build it back up, to restore it. That was fulfilled when Jesus died he laid down his life right, see, he's the one that tore down the temple the city and then he restored it he built it back up into a, an incorruptible temple All right. consider this Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins. Jesus did it. And to make reconciliation for iniquity. Jesus did it. 
and to bring in everlasting righteousness. Jesus did it. And to seal the vision of prophecy and anoint the most holy. The most holy is the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. So, I mean, it's plain as day. Plain as day. 70 AD had nothing to do with anything at all. But when you reject the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to come up with these goofy doctrines. And Roderick, I thought you were a believer. A lover of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why are you clinging on to these bizarre doctrines? You have to reject the death of the Lord Jesus Christ in order to say that the temple was destroyed in 70 AD. You're making Christ's death and life vain by preaching the stuff you I'm telling you this is the core right here it's centered around that idea right there in Daniel 9 and it's all a matter of who tore down the temple it was the temple torn down in 70 AD or was it torn down in 33 AD that's what it comes down to and Roderick uh, you're putting too much trust in what men say, buddy. Too much trust into deceivers. And consider this now. Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, and all throughout the Bible, really. Uh, look, but let's go to Matthew 24. Make this real simple, in case somebody didn't know. Jesus is asked, what is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world, right? Let me just read the first six verses here and Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple and Jesus said unto them see ye not all these things verily I say unto you there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives the disciples came unto him privately saying tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. See, they were curious about the end of the world too. Very curious, right? And here they got first-hand knowledge. Or they got first-hand, uh, first-hand, um, you know, um, uh, first they got first-hand. Uh, I can't think of the word. Access. They got first-hand access to the word of God and it's the Lord Jesus Christ and Jesus stands there and said unto them take heed that no man deceive you isn't that interesting the very first thing that Jesus says when asked about the end of the world he says take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying that I Jesus am Christ and shall deceive many it's interesting, isn't it? And that's exactly what we see going on in the world today. And it, even more interesting, in my opinion, is that things are getting worse and worse and worse and worse. Right? I mean, we see that happening now, and we read about it here in Matthew 24. Right? And it's getting to a point to where if God allowed things to continue as they are, there would come a point to where there was there would be nobody saved. And except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So the deception is going to get worse and worse and worse. And that it's it's not a magic spray. It's people, deceived people. The amount of deceived people is going to grow. It's con going to continue to grow. And the doctrines that they teach, they're going to be very persuasive. The 70 AD stuff, very, very persuasive. Um, millions of people believe it. The, the, uh, really, the only problem with this doctrine is that it's not supported by the Bible at all. Other than that, it's a hell of a doctrine. 